Last week it was pretty late at night and I had a decision to make if I could watch a movie or not and I was picking between a few different movies and I came across 127 Hours directed by Danny Boyle and it's only about 95 minutes so I decided to put it on and I kind of expected it to be a sort of conventional drama. I knew the story of Aaron Ralston, the dude who basically cuts off his arm to survive and I was expecting an experience pretty close to other dramatic films kind of like uh, All is Lost or something. But it turned out to be so much better than I could have ever expected. 127 Hours is one of the rare films where we basically spend the entire film with one single character. And thank goodness they cast James Franco, who I'm not always completely impressed with. But he is outstanding. Shockingly good in this film. And he gives us one of the better characters of the past decade. Someone who, unfortunately, he was overlooked for Best Actor. But he deserved it, in my opinion. And this character has so many different layers that it's going to be really, really fun to talk about here. Coming into this movie, I was pretty convinced that Danny Boyle would make Aaron Ralston a one-dimensional hero because almost everybody has heard this story and you think, how could a man have the will to cut their own arm off with a dull knife? That act alone, everybody knows it's going to happen at some point in the movie. And because you have that in the back of your mind, you're kind of expecting this guy to be an exceptional human being, that he has this extraordinary will and he does of course but Danny Boyle didn't get lost in that expectation and he made Aaron Ralston a multi-layered interesting relatable character before Aaron even goes on his excursion he gets a call from his mother and he ignores it and that's the first sign that this person is going to be a little bit different than the conventional hero of most movies he's a guy who is very individual he doesn't like to communicate much with others he likes to do his own thing. He has a sort of arrogance to him. Not a outwardly narcissism, but a little bit of a... He's very impressed with himself, Aaron Ralston. And that's the first thing we get to learn about his character in the entire film. The slight aura of arrogance gets Aaron to a lot of different problems because he does not tell his mother. He doesn't even pick up. He doesn't tell his friends where he's going on this hike. The only person he tells is his boss because, of course, he needs to let him know he's going to be missing from work. He believes himself to be untouchable in this environment. In fact, he tells Kate Mara when he meets her that he believes the canyon is his second home. And he doesn't conceive the possibility that something may go wrong, so he doesn't think that he'll need help from anybody. Everybody needs help in some possibilities, but he doesn't conceive that. And he thinks that no matter what happens, his personal capability will get him out of anything. And that's just not true, and that's so relatable. I think even when we're the best at the things we do, there's still lapses in our ability and we need to get help from other people for certain contingencies. And that's a big part of this movie and a big part of Aaron Ralston as a character. When Aaron Ralston runs into Kate Mara's character and her friend, we get to see why Aaron considers this place his second home. He's very proactive with the two of them. He's confident. He's extroverted. He leads them into different places because he's so comfortable in this environment. If he was at a party like they suggest he comes to... He might not be the same, he'll be around different guys, but in this canyon in Utah, he's the best of what he can be. And we get to understand why he loves this place so much, because we get to see just how smooth and how confident, and you can tell he's into Kmar's character, and he's a little bit strange, he's a little bit different, but this place elevates him to what he imagines himself to be. Following the sequence with the two girls, we get to see the famous scene where Aaron Ralston falls into the canyon, gets his arm stuck against the rock, and Danny Boyle shows us immediately what this guy is about because instead of freaking out, going full panic like I would do, like you would do, like most people would do, he freaks out a little bit, not too much, but he lays out everything in his bag, he goes over every single option, he tries to make different little contraptions to get him out of the situation. It shows us how resourceful he is and how comfortable he is in even the most dire circumstances. We get to learn a lot more about his characters after his contraptions fail, after his confidence and his coolness does not pay off, and he starts to have these visions as he drifts closer to insanity, as his water runs low, as his food runs low, and these visions tell us so much about who he is as a person, his flaws, and what he wanted to be, and what he failed to be, and it's one of the best parts of the movie because we all can relate to these little visions he has. Maybe my favorite vision of Aaron's is when a flash flood comes and frees him from this horrible circumstance and he goes to his ex-girlfriend's house and this is so deeply ingrained in the human psyche because I think we all have moments when we're 
seemingly trapped in a terrible situation, and we want something out of the ether to come and save us so we can make good on our mistakes and try to rework our lives. And of course, in this movie, it tells us, listen, things like that just don't happen. You have to enact your will to fix your life. And that's a key part of Aaron and a key part of this movie. In another vision, sort of a flashback as well, we get to see Aaron's relationship with his ex-girlfriend who he clearly still has major feelings for because he thinks about her a lot before he believes he's going to die. And through these visions, we get to see the relationship when they're younger and they're so full of passion for each other and they trust each other. And then over time, that degrades and they're at a sports game and she tells him, Aaron, you're going to be so lonely. Your selfishness, how you've treated me poorly, you think because you're this very capable person and that you can do everything alone, that you're going to be content without me. You're not. I know that through your loneliness, you're going to be destroyed. And it's a very, very powerful scene, a very integral scene. And James Franco is so good. You can see it on his face when he's sitting there alone, that everything she told him is true. Another majorly important moment for this character is a scene where Aaron is basically having a conversation with a late night host version of himself and he's kind of verging toward insanity at this point and apparently this is a improvised moment by James Franco if that's true it is a pure stroke of genius by this actor and it's one of the best scenes of the decade and there's a couple moments I want to talk about specifically during this interview he says something really interesting the late night version of Aaron he says you know despite or maybe because you think you're so great you're going to be trapped in the situation. You're going to die, aren't you? And everyone starts laughing. It's amazing. But there's something so powerful about that. The whole despite versus because. Is it true that despite, or maybe because you're a big fucking hard hero, you didn't tell anyone where you were going? The movie is asking the viewer through the sequence, maybe it's not only our weaknesses, which get us into problems, maybe it's our strengths too. Think about how powerful that question is. Aaron believed that his self-reliance and his ability to be alone in these rough environments was his greatest strength. But actually, it's also a fault. And I think through this, we need to ask ourselves, what if through our greatest strengths, we're missing something? Maybe the strength of ours is blindsiding us to a different weakness in a hole in our thinking. It's such an interesting concept and it's one of the better ideas I've heard in film for quite some time. When the interview concludes, it's such a somber, powerful, sad note. He says, oh, you forgot all these things? You didn't tell anybody? And the interview late night host version of himself says, oops. And then the real Aaron, you can see, hits him. And he nods and he understands everything he did wrong. And he just says, oops, yeah, I got everything wrong. And you know what? I'm going to die now. Anyone? After all these visions, he basically gives up. And when he gives up, he does something very interesting. At first, I didn't know what to think about it, but it actually works well with a lot of writing on the subject. He basically pulls up a video of Kate Mara and is about to whack off to her. And at first, I'm like, this is kind of weird. But if you've read the book, uh, Man's Search for Meaning, it was a guy who was trapped in a concentration camp. And he tells the reader that when people give up in these camps, they basically give in to pleasure. They saved up all these cigarettes for when they get out and when they give up they're just like I'm smoking them all right now and that's basically what he's doing he doesn't have anything to get pleasure out of so he pulls up this video of Kate Mara and he doesn't do it and when he doesn't do it that's him saying I'm not going to give in yet I'm not going to degrade myself to that level there's still a chance for me to get out of this situation very very cool scene very smart scene as well after that moment the thing that actually gets Aaron to cut off his arm this is really smart, okay? Think about this. He has a vision of his future son, and he sees his family, and he starts to think to himself, I have a responsibility to do everything in my ability to get back to these people. 
And it's when he starts to think about others except for himself, that's how he conjures the will to get out of the situation. It was his selfishness which trapped him in that canyon. And it was his humility which got him out. The character is relatable in so many different ways. Danny Boyle could have made him a one-note hero, but he didn't do it. And if you have not seen this movie, I beg you to watch it. Because there's so many relatable themes. And James Franco, again, masterful performance. So, so good. If you want to see more character analysis videos, that's my favorite thing to do. I made a few other videos, and I might do some other videos here and there on broader subjects. But character is my thing. That's what I love to make videos about. So if you're interested in more of them, please subscribe. Please like as I grow my channel. Thank you so, so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day, and hopefully I will catch you later. Have a good one.